Hello, it's Brian from Yellow Banana Productions. Hi there and welcome to the beginner's guide to video cameras. This week we're going to look at tripods. From assembling the tripod to looking at the main uses for a tripod, mainly the pan and tilt. So, let's crack on with it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to put up the tripod to the appropriate height. So on all the legs here, you have what they call a leg locking lever, or it's just a flap, basically. So when you're putting the tripod up, start with the ones, the levers or the flips that are closest to the head, because it's a stronger part of the tripod. So you simply pull the lever out and then press it over to lock it again. That's the second one, you pull it out and you do that and you lock it and the third one you pull it out and you lock it. Now some of the tripods come with um, three sections, this one has got two sections. So anyway that's the first one and then now you open the tripod. Now that height there, even though it's quite small, that height there is actually in the most appropriate height if you're filming someone when they're sitting, so they're eye level. So remember, you will have the camera on top here, so it will come up a bit. Now most tripods, they vary a little bit in height, but certainly with this tripod, the first legs out will bring you up to an appropriate height for someone who's sitting and you want to film them at eye level. So if someone's standing and you want to film them, then I suggest you pull out the second levers, same thing, as before you just pull them out and then you lock them and that is pretty much the appropriate height for someone who's standing when the legs of the tripod are at their full extent that's when your tripod is at its strongest so I mean if you have it like that that's not very steady you want to have them full out as possible so just remember when your legs are really wide uh, you're probably going to be quite strong. Okay, <laughs> so you remember that whatever way you want. Now, when you're putting the tripod down or disassembling it, I would do it in the opposite way. So what I would tend to do is take the bottom legs and I would unflip them <laughs> or just put the flips over and I would do the weaker legs first. So you do that, simple as that. So you just do it in reverse of the same way that you assembled it in the first place. So you simply do that, 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 and you put them in like that. And that's how I would put it back to its original position. Now most tripods have a spirit level here, so you can see if your tripod is level or not on the ground. I'll show you. It's just round here, just round the corner. So there's a little, tri a little spirit level here you can see if it's quite level to the ground or not. Now I tend to not use the spirit level very often. The way I tend to find out if it's actually level or not, I look through the screen itself. And as long as you're not in a council flat, huh, then I go by that and I can judge by that if the shot is going to be level or not. So the next thing you want to do is to attach your camera to or your video camera to the tripod. Uh, it's a little plate here. Let's see if I can get this down level. This is called a quick shoe, this plate here. And here we have a quick shoe lever. Basically that lever there is spring loaded. You simply pull that up and then you take out the plate. And you can see in the camera there, on, at the bottom there, there's a, a thread here for the screw. So you basically put that in and you screw it until it's hand tight. Okay, so now you have got your, um, your camera onto your quick release on the plate. Now, what I would do first is make sure everything's tight. So there's a little uh, lever here. It's got a screw bit on it and you just tighten that. Turn it around here and there's a little screw bit there, you tighten that as well. Uh, again, don't make it overly tight, just as long as it's tight enough and that keeps this firm, okay? 
Now, how you put your camera on, there's a little lever here, the quick re release lever, and then you, you pull it back and then you simply put your camera in there, like so. However, you might find that you have to slide it in at the side like that. So, once you've done that, pull, put the release, um, the quick release back to its original position. I mean, it should spring back, but I tend to pull it push it forward anyway just to make sure it is in place. Now your camera is at this height but what if you need your camera even higher? Well there's two options you buy a tripod that can go higher or most of them have this here there's a lock and nut here where is it which one is it? Um, this one here you unscrew that and there's a lever here you simply while you're holding on to the leg there you simply wind that and that will put your camera up. <laughs> now I'm five foot three, so when that's at full height, there you go, it's far too high for me. So there you go, that's what you do. Now make sure you tighten that, because if you don't and you push down on that, that can just simply fall down. So make sure if you're gonna put that up at all, you tighten that after, and that makes it quite firm. So now we're going to look at the pan and the tilt actions. So pan is goes from left to right and the tilt goes up and down. It's that straightforward. How you do that, you unscrew this here, okay? And that will allow you to pan, which means you can go from side to side, okay? Now to do the tilt, the lever here to adjust the tilt is this lever here okay you unscrew it like that and what that allows you to do is to do the tilt so that is your pan and your tilt so if you're not going to be filming uh, using the pan and the tilt all the time like that what I would suggest is you tighten everything up hand tight of course because imagine I forget to uh, tighten the pan and I accidentally come against it like that not meaning to then it moves all over the place so if you tighten it then that's not going to happen everything stays in place now another feature that a lot of tripods have is um, you can adjust it so that it's vertical what I mean by that there's a little lever here so if you can see you unscrew that and what you can do with that you can move that to the side like that however that's more likely to be for a stills camera i've never used it for a video camera but the option is there if you want it as i say more likely for a stills camera the first thing i would say is think of your tripod as an actual investment in other words, don't go too cheap. I would suggest that you don't go anything less than £30. My experience that when the tripods that I've bought that's been less than £30, they aren't all that great. And I would say beware of anything that says lightweight because that's exactly what they are. I'm not saying they're all like that, but generally when it says lightweight, they are very light and they can be a bit flimsy. I uh, remember doing a uh, filming a concert and I had uh, this tripod and a video camera and I was at one side of the hall and I had a friend who was at the other side of the hall with a smaller camera and a, a much more smaller tripod. It was, it was very lightweight and it was very flimsy and what happened I accidentally came against her. I brushed past, literally brushed past her, uh, her tripod and literally just brushed past it and the thing fell over so both her, her, her tripod and her camera fell and the camera ended up with a crack on the lens <laughs> so I would be very wary when something says it's a lightweight tripod that's exactly what it is and it can be a bit flimsy the other thing to look out for when you're buying a tripod is the height now when you see and look at in the specifications look for the height when you see tripods 
that um, it, and on Amazon and what have you, unless you read the specs, it can be quite misleading because the picture on the picture you might think, oh, that's a normal sized tripod, it's, it's got a good height to it. But quite often they could be tabletop tripods. So if you're looking for something of this height, I mean this height here of this tripod at that height is about 48 inches, about four feet. I'm quite a small guy. If I put that up to its full height, you're talking it's about five and a half feet. So you're looking for something along those lines. That height there is 40 inches, what's it, 123 centimetres. So you're looking for something at least that. Now the other thing you want to look at is, does the camera have a smooth action? So for instance, this one here, when I move, unscrew the tilt and the pan handles, it's a pan handle by the way, and I move that, very, it's very smooth action on this particular tripod. Some tripods, are the, especially the cheaper ones, they can be a wee bit tight here, in which case when you do a pan or a tilt, it can be a bit jittery, which means your shot will be jittery as well, so be careful of that. If possible, try before you buy. Go into um, a camera shop or a video camera shop, have a look at the tripods there and have a go and just check out the height and check out if it has got smooth action as well. So that is the sort of thing you're looking for. Well, I hope you found that useful. To recap on some of the things you should be looking for when you're considering buying a tripod. Number one, think of buying a tripod as an investment. In other words, don't go too cheaply. At least £30, I would suggest. Anything between £30 and £60 for a new tripod, you should get something pretty good. Number two, beware of tripods that are lightweight because sometimes it can be a little bit flimsy, so just be careful anything that's advertised as lightweight. Number three, check out the specifications, in particular the height of the actual tripod itself. Uh, unless you're looking for a tabletop uh, tripod, make sure the tripod that you're going to buy is at the appropriate height. In other words, you're looking something about four feet upwards as a maximum height. Number four, does the tripod have a smooth action? In other words, a smooth pan and tilt, or is it a little bit jittery? So that's something you want to be looking out for as well. And finally, number five, if possible, try before you buy. If you can go into a, a shop that sells tripods and have a go at some, some of them in there and see which one suits your needs best. Well, I hope you found this uh, beginner's guide to tripods useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and feel free to leave a comment. Make it positive if you can. If you missed the first beginner's guide, which was on video cameras itself, the link is below. And it also includes a review of the first video camera I bought. Next week, we're going to look at microphones. Well, that's it for now. This is Brian from Yellow Banana Productions. See you soon.